let's get you going up and running with Jumpstart Android Pro. I'm Don Felker. I am the author of Jumpstart Pro Android. First thing we're going to need to do is download Android Studio. So you can just Google Android Studio. You usually get the first result here. This will likely look different for you. And then at that point, you can go ahead and download whatever the latest one is here. Now, please note, the version is probably going to be different than the one you see here, unless you're watching it right as this one's released. But even as I record this, they could release a new version tomorrow and this page would change. So just download the latest version of Android Studio. Then at that point, you want to go ahead and clone the GitHub repository down to a local folder. So you should know how to do that. We won't walk through that process. If you do, take a look on how to clone various repositories. And then once you have cloned Jumpstart Pro Android, you'll want to start Android Studio. And then when you start Android Studio, you'll likely get a window here. So let's see if we can close this out. We'll close this project. You'll get something that looks similar to this. Now this could change. I do have an extra plugin. I have a Flutter plugin installed, so you may not see that again. Android Studio will change a lot. You're going to click open and you're going to go to your location of where your code is located and you're just going to open the folder. This will be what you see. There is a high chance you might have some panels that are open here. There might be a GitHub Copilot panel you can close that. There might be other panels that are open and closed. The ones that you're interested in are going to be the ones that have the folder over here. This is going to be your project structure and then we have some other tooling over here. So this video we have now open the actual Jumpstart Pro Android inside of Android Studio. But what I wanted to do is walk you through some of the basic things in Android Studio so you're familiar. Now on the left hand side here, we have what's known as the project structure. Now there are a couple of views and by default, it will set itself to the Android view. I particularly do not like this view because this is not how the files are laid out on the file system. I want to see the files, how they are in the file system, because as I move back and forth between the file system and Android Studio, then I can be uh, directly in line with how I'm understanding it. So change that, you'll go from, change it from pro Android up to just project. Now this is what you'll actually see all the files. So if we expand this project, this is a fo the folder we just opened and we'll go in there. These are the external libraries that we are using, the dependencies that we have. It's just showing you where they're at. And then scratches and consoles is a different topic. You don't have to worry about that. Inside of Jumpstart Pro Android, this is all the same code that we have here on this. So if we see here that we have all the same folders, everything, Gradle Docs Config App, Gradle Docs Config App, we have all the same things. You'll notice that the app has a little extra icon here. Again, it's very important to note that your Android Studio might look completely different than this. Android Studio changes a lot. I've written a handful of books on Android development and the number one most thing that gets has the most churn are the actual installation instructions of Android Studio. Android Studio, the IDE, does get iterated on quite a bit. So please note that you might see some different things. Just kind of poke around, the concepts are the same. The concept of project and Android, that's been there for years. So you might just have to find out where it's project. You might see Android, you might see project first. It depends on how the IDE is configured when you install it. Usually though, the defaults to Android, I change it to project. You have a couple of other different things in here. You have some place where you can commit, you can look at resources. There's GitHub Copilot if you have that installed, which I do, you can check out pull requests. Down here at the bottom, we have other important windows. Uh, you have something known as Logcat. This is where the logs of the application as we're writing logs as the application is executing, this is where the logs will be shown. We have app quality insights. We don't need to worry about that. That's problems. There are going to be build problems that we have, any configuration problems like shown here. Terminal, which is somewhere we'll spend a lot of time and look and get. So if we open terminal, we actually have an integrated terminal right inside of here. We'll go ahead and close some of these out here. And this is just a, uh, an information stating that we can upgrade the project, which will happen shortly. So now once we're in here, this is just, just a regular console. So you can kind of hop in here in the terminal. I'm going to close this out, but you need to close it up by hiding it here. And I'm actually going to do shift escape and that will allow me to close it. Now up here, we have a couple of different things. You probably do not have this. This, these are the emulators I've already set up and we will cover that in another video, how to set up an emulator, which is why this is the emulator I have now. This is the app that we can currently run is app. So you'll probably see app inside of there. We used to have an ice have another one called jumpstart. It's now just been called app. So I can actually just remove this one completely. And there we go, I have app. And then these are the various different commands here. Now, if for some reason you don't have the little green icon and some of the other things over here, what you wanna do is click this sync 
project with the Gradle files. So we'll sync that with the Gradle files. And what that does is it looks at our Gradle dependencies. And that's going to be in our build.gradle. And then we also have one inside of the application folder, which is the applications build.gradle file. It's the build file for the app. Then there's an actual project build file as well. And then we have uh, various different things which allow us to set up various different modules. That's in our settings in here. And then we also have other things such as setting up our libraries, which is in a TOML file itself. And that's going to be libs.versions.toml. We'll close this out. And to get this window here, I just did command shift though, and I just did libs.version.toml. And we can see that it's inside of the Gradle folder here. And this is where we have all our dependencies. And we'll walk through that. And when we sync the project here, it reads all the dependencies that we have in here and then sees how they're set up inside of our application and inside of our project itself and starts building all of the dependencies and pulling them down so it's ready to start running. So we won't worry about this just yet. There are a bunch of other menus that you can explore in Android Studio. It's a very integrated environment. There's some notifications that you'll see over here, which we have project updates, perhaps some other things that might need to be updated, things that are happening in the IDE. You have some areas where you can explore the various different Gradle tasks that are inside of Gradle. The task list has not been built. If we click this, it would basically sync a bunch of Gradle stuff, which would take some time. Uh, here we have our device manager. These are the existing emulators I have. Again, we'll show you how to set up an emulator in, the, in another video. We also have currently running devices. As you When you start an emulator, it will show right here in the integrated environment. So you can see all the running devices, which you can run many at once. There's Gemini, which is the built-in AI. We will, I will not be using that. There's Copilot, if you have Copilot installed, and the Copilot chat, if you would like to, to work with that. These are the menu items to run the app on the emulator or the connected device. This will debug it. And then you have a couple other things like profilers that we're not going to get into in this course here. Also, up top here are some other very useful tools. So we have Build, which will make the entire project. We can build it from here. We can do a whole bunch of other things in the, inside of here, such as build the APKs and the bundles and so forth, uh, generate the signed app bundle so we can ship it to production, which is another video we will get to as well. There are other run things in here. We will run the app. This is the same thing that we see over here uh, and various different configurations. So if you need to edit any configurations, test configurations, you would come inside of here. Uh, then we have some tools. So we have the device manager, which is what we uh, saw over here, the same exact thing. And then we also have the SDK manager. This is important here. When we open the SDK manager, this is the currently installed SDKs that you have for your application. Now you will potentially need to download some additional ones. So we see the Android SDK here. I currently have 31, uh, excuse me, 33, 34, 35 and older ones installed all the way down to 28. Our minimum SDK at the time of this recording is 28. Where do you find that information? You can find that in the build.gradle file on the min SDK version. This is the minimum SDK that the Android app will run on. And what that means is all Android devices, we have one here, this is a Pixel 4a, all Android devices get shipped updates just like iPhones. These SDKs come down. So as there's a new version of Android released eventually and hopefully it comes down to a new phone. However, phones do age and they cannot support the new features. So eventually you get to a point where this is an old phone and we can't support those features. So what we have here is a min SDK of 28. And if you're wondering what that means, you can go to a website called apilevels.com and this will show you all of the Android API levels that are currently out there. So if we look at level 28, which is what we have here, that's actually Android 9. Um, the Looks like it's 90% of the market you're gonna hit with at least API level 28. Now, if you were trying to get really low and you wanna hit 99.9, .9, you have to go all the way down and support Android 4. The problem is when you support older versions, you have to have all these if statements inside of your code of, all right, do we, ex do we how do we handle this permission and how do we not handle this permission and this model? And you start handling basically a bunch of different operating systems. So here we have the minimum set to 28. So you're going to hit 90% of the market. It was released in 2018. So that's pretty good. It's 2025 during this recording. So it's seven years ago. That's when this was released. So now we are on Android 15. Android 16 will actually be out a little bit later this year as Android is going to a two release cycle cadence. 
So we could take a look at those. And so that's where our minimum SDK is. So now if we go back to the tools and we go back to our SDK manager, what I typically advise is to make sure you have your minimum SDK installed, install that one, and then install all of them up to that point. So you can see I'm missing a couple here. You're not required to have them all because we are. what we're going to do is we're actually going to compile against a different SDK. So you see this right here, compile SDK. This is what we're going to compile against. And then we also have the target SDK. These are three confusing concepts. And the best place to get the definition for this is actually on a Stack Overflow post that we see here. Right here in the middle, we see that the min SDK is the earliest version of the SDK that this app will run on. Then we have the target SDK. This is the version of the SDK that we have actually targeted. We are ensuring that our application will run on this SDK. What that means is all new runtime behaviors will be enabled. And then we have the compile SDK, which is used for compiling and so forth. And that's used inside the IDE. Now, what that means is I can change the compile SDK to 35 and we'll still compile using the new versions of the compiler and all that kind of stuff. However, any new features that are enabled in version 35 will not be enabled until we upgrade the target SDK to 35. So there are, you can support minimum versions, target new versions, support new compiler features, all with these various different configurations. And I'll provide the link to the Stack Overflow. But if you're wondering how to just find it yourself, just go Google min SDK versus, tar versus target SDK versus compile SDK. Okay, so let's go back to our SDK manager. And once you're in your SDK manager, download at least the minimum SDK, and then you'll want to download version 34 at least. And then you can download the other ones as well. Now these will take a while. These files are large. If you have a slow internet connection, I apologize. It's going to take you a little bit. All right, so once that's done, you can cancel out of that. There's various other things inside of here where you can get into even like a Kotlin REPL and so forth when, and play with Kotlin kind of in a command line, very much like Rails console. You can do that in Kotlin REPL at a very high level. Again, it's experimental phase right now. And then of course we have Git, which is where you can see all of your your git commands and there's also you can see these things down here there's git right here and it'll show you all of the stuff your local branches so there's an integrated git environment as well i'll be using everything in the command line if we do hop into git at all and then we'll go ahead and close this out and this is our basic introduction to opening the project in android studio and just kind of getting a general understanding of the IDE itself. In the next couple of videos, we'll actually set up some emulators, we'll get the application building, we'll install it on emulators, and then we'll do a full code walkthrough.